Well, it's really an exciting uh, and new day for national service because we've never really had top leaders in our military who see that less than 1% one, uh, 1 of Americans are serving abroad in our wars with little connection to obligations back home, coming forward and calling for large-scale civilian national service. And so the, the daunting task that Walter charged us with was to translate this extraordinary vision and leadership from our top commander in Afghanistan into a concrete plan of action that America could envision and develop together and embrace. The first person we re reached out to was David McCullough because we wanted a historic perspective on this issue. And he said, take, take the spirit of the past, bring together the top uh, and best people in the country. And so over the last year, we've listened to uh, military leaders, civilian leaders, millennials, uh, leaders in the private sector, and have developed a plan of action. And this project is called the Franklin Project, embodying the ideals that Benjamin Franklin first articulated and represented early in his life. Very quickly, so if we take military and civilian services, two sides of the same coin, how do we effectuate that? So imagine every 18-year-old in, in the United States getting information at 18 on their options to serve in the five branches of the armed forces, but also their options to serve in civilian national service. So you could join the Army or Teach for America. You could join the Marine Corps or the Peace Corps. You could join the Air Force or Habitat for Humanity. But it wouldn't be, as the general said, just traditional volunteering for a few hours on a weekend. It'd be a serious commitment for a full year of civilian national service. Also, the power we see in it in ensuring there's a living allowance is bringing people together of different backgrounds, income levels, races, ethnicities, and even political beliefs. Imagine what it could do for the country in terms of developing a generation of leaders that see the reality of problems on the ground and then in turn uh, can shape policy. And uh, whatever field they choose can work together across lines and parties to get things done. We also envision a, uh, a series of national service corps that meet national challenges in areas where national service, we have decades of research showing it's making a difference. Third, we envision a, a very powerful new idea when Sarge Shriver uh, wrote that memo to John Kennedy in 1961 envisioning a Peace Corps. He didn't want to just create a government to government program. He actually wanted to run the program through nonprofits and colleges and universities, but the infrastructure didn't exist. So we envision a national service certification system that challenges colleges and universities, nonprofits all across the United States to emerge with full-time national service opportunities. And we think this will democratize and modernize national service in ways that can open it up. One other really interesting idea, and I want to thank Jane Harmon and many of the people in the audience who actually helped us develop this plan over the last year because uh, it's been a daunting experience, but uh, GI civilian service option. We did a survey of returning vets from Af Afghanistan and, and Iraq, and they said, we want to continue to be civic assets. And those that had a, a, a civilian service options actually had much better transitions home than those who didn't. And so uh, we envision, and, and Vanessa Kirsch and America Forward and others have worked on this, opening up the GI Bill so that veterans would have the choice to use their existing benefits for up to a full year of civilian national service is, is happening and the mission continues in Team Rubicon. We have other ideas. I think I'll stop there. But uh, this plan has been endorsed by Madeleine Albright and Condi Rice. Uh, the two presidents issued their support John, yesterday. John McCain just yesterday. John McCain yesterday.